Hi everyone, how are you today? I hope you are always healthy. Welcome back to my channel. Like always, today I'm going to show you amazing photos that will make you wonder about the advanced technology of the past. Some might say that I'm being repetitive by displaying these photos. But that's the whole point. These photos are proof that a small occult elite of and the history to fit their narrative. To be honest, this channel is in danger, maybe it will gone soon. Therefore, I hope you guys subscribe to my backup channel, so we can stay connected every day. Please check the description box below. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. In the left picture we have one of the voltage regulators from the control room of the power plant. In the right picture, we have the wheel of sun god's chariot at ancient Konark Temple, India. Sumerians looked to the sky as they invented the system of time which we still use today. One might find it curious why we divide the hours into 60 minutes and the days into 24 hours. Why not 10 or 12? The answer is quite simple, because the inventors of time did not operate on a decimal system, base 10, or do a decimal system, base 12, but a sexagesimal system, base 60. For the ancient Sumerian innovators who first divided the movements of the heavens into countable intervals, 60 was the perfect number. The number 60 can be divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10, 12, 15, 20, and 30 equal parts. Moreover, ancient astronomers believed there were 360 days in a year, a number which 60 fits neatly into 6 times. For more than 5,000 years, the world has remained committed to their delineation of time. Anyway, a meteorite flashes over Black Sea near Sochi, Russia on Tuesday, December 7th night. Could it really be a meteorite, or just military testing a new tech? This mosaic, which was discovered by descending approximately 5.5 meters below the ground, is the largest known single-piece mosaic in the world. Antakya, Turkey. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you'd learn something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. This is an excerpt from the article on Medievalists.net. Nanotechnology is typically viewed as something that human beings are only now starting to make use of, and would be considered a technology of the future. However, a team of researchers has discovered that medieval artisans made use of some form of nanotechnology to create ultra-thin gilding material. But they still don't know exactly how they did it. Swishgul dates back to at least the 13th century, when it began being used as gilding material in art from Germany and Switzerland. It is a metal foil made from a thin layer of gold over a silver backing, and could be added to sculptures or paintings, where it would create a paler tone than if one used pure gold. Zwish gold could be found applied in small sections to sculptures, altars, wall paintings and book illuminations. While the use of Zwish gold is frequently mentioned in historical documents such as guild regulations, city statutes and business contracts, there is little mention of them in artistic treatises, so the exact process of how it was made is still unknown. A group of several researchers from Switzerland and Germany have been studying this material, and have now released a new paper detailing how these gildings are ultra-thin. The team examined 75 samples of Zwischgeld found in late medieval items that are part of the Swiss National Museum collection. By viewing the samples through high-resolution scanning electron microscopy, coupled with energy dispersive X-ray analysis, the team was able to determine their thicknesses and materials proportions. They discovered this wish gold leaf would have a total thickness of between 50 and 260 nanometers, with its gold layer being between 20 and 50 nanometers. The nanometer is an incredibly small unit of measurement, the equivalent of one billionth of a meter. 
the Swish Gold layers would be classified as ultra-thin and a form of nanotechnology. By way of comparison, the width of a human hair is between 80,000 and 100,000 nanometers. Architectonic miniature pre-Incas, found in Huanuco, Peru. Photo by Baby Trujillo. In fact, miniature cultural remains were found underground in the province of Huamalis district of Jacas Grands, and the Ministry of Culture of Peru, nor the headquarters of the Direction of the Concentrated Culture, do not provide support for the summer gave these small enclosures models. Which could be also small entities grounds. Archaeological excavations are necessary, archaeological structures are very similar to the city of Petra in Jordan but in miniature, a place where the Spanish researcher Verdu Pontes has discovered geoglyphs, embryos petroglyphs of reptilians and hybrid humans among each other. These archaeological testimonies are located in the department of Huanuco, Peru. The Govan stones are examples of hogback some of the strangest monuments to have survived from early medieval Britain. Serving as sarcophagi for important figures like royalty or wealthy nobles, they only exist in places where both Norse and native British cultures are present. They have been found in Cumbria, central Scotland, and parts of Yorkshire. Featuring art and decoration that is a mix of Celtic and Norse styles. Giant Books for Giant People By the way, these are the Tartarian buildings you need to see today. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This everything inside me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.